This is a spiritual place, one where long ago, the people and religion of Tibet spilled down from the towering Himalayan plateau and settled in the rugged mountains of Northwest Yunnan. These snowy ranges contain panoramic vistas and an ancient culture not too different from the mountain paradise described in James Hilton's Lost Horizon. The high altitude polar winds made for a brisk morning, and I could feel the thinness of the air in my lungs. But a temple sheathed in gold gleamed like fire in the intensity of the morning light. This was my welcome to Yunnan's Tibetan country. The monastery shining in the sun is often called the Little Patala Palace for its resemblance to Lhasa's most famous religious complex. Songzhenlin Monastery is the most important Tibetan Buddhist temple in southwest China. Befitting of this, the roof is entirely plated in gold, and carved animal motifs keep watch over the distant peaks. Below, at the foundation, 108 auspicious numbered columns support the massive structure. Uh,它是一六七九年，用我们的五十达来，呃，那个奏请康熙。康熙呢，他就批准以后，我们的五十达来就亲自宣旨修建起来的。在海拔还是比较高啊。啊，这边的海拔的话，可能在三千六左右。
There is one more stop on my list here, an oddity gurgling out of these rugged mountains. Like something from a fairy tale, the white terraces of Bai Shui Tai stand out against the surrounding green of the forest. They are the product of mineralized water bubbling slowly from the ground. But the local Nashi people say the formation was created by the gods to replicate the rice terraces in heaven and to teach humans how to farm. Shangri-La is deserving of its name, a place of deep spiritual resonance, windswept mountains, snow, and welcoming people. It is a place set apart, both literally and figuratively, from the rest of you. Thanks for watching. This was just one of the many incredible places I got to visit on my month-long journey across UNET. Like, share, and explore the rest of the province with me in this 12-episode series.